Well, the scandals turn into high gear as we enter the USGP weekend. So, Autosport, which I believe is who broke this. There's a lot at the same time, so it's obviously there was some sort of news put out by the FIA. Autosport has broken that uh, the FIA have spoken out in recent weeks concerning an unidentified outfit may be found a clever way to adjust the front bib. Uh, or the tea tray on before uh, between qualifying and a race. So what this means is essentially uh, a cheating kind of scandal. So I want to go over a couple things in this video. What what the f is a tea tray? How can it be advantageous? Which team do we think it is? And what are the what are the mitigations going on by the FIA to try to stop whatever this is going on if it is happening at all? So I want to preface all of this by saying that this is all conjecture. Um, that nobody has said anything on who it is yet uh, or if it's even happening I uh, like in this very similar to the brake balance vectoring turning thing that happened a few months ago now uh, nobody has said anything but usually in this case what happens is a team or teams suspect somebody of cheating and they'll let the FIA know on how they think it's being done and that they should go into further checks to make sure it's not being done usually that is done by the team that is not cheating <laughs> but uh, it can be a bit more complicated than just one person tattling on the other. Keep in mind, all these guys have multiple people whose job it is to spy on the other teams. Whether the car gets in a wreck and they lift it in the air and they look at the underneath of the car. Thermal imaging we've seen before. All kinds of stuff to try to figure out each other's tricks of the tree. Uh, as soon as possible as well. That's why you see Ferrari always lining up human walls and stuff like that in front of the garages. If you've ever watched uh, some of the in-season testing stuff especially before it was really televised uh in recent years uh you'll really understand what they do to try to stop other guys from doing anything okay so let's start off what the balls is a tea tray oh this is from 2022 we have some different cars on here that we'll go through but this is a tea tray basically it's the very front lip of the underside of the car so this is the haas the rb18 uh, the W13. So if you can imagine the two front wheels and then the underside of the car where the lip comes out. It's really that particular part of the car. And that's where you can adjust the ride height of the car. That's the main front dampening that goes on there. Well, that's a good... The best one to look at here is probably... Actually, let's go to... Mm, that's the SF23. Again, these are older ones. I guess the AMR is probably the best. So this is the dampener here. What they would be doing is... This is also covered up. You wouldn't be able to see this while they're running. And it's on the underside of the car. It would be probably about a foot behind the front wheels. Uh, and it's right... This is this little gray... Mm, gray bit down here is the bottom of the barge board. So that would be right where the barge board in the front of the car is. So... That is what a tea tray is. Uh, you can adjust this height and it is measured by the FIA and you get a set height for the weekend. So you're allowed to change it, but once you enter into qualifying and outside of Park Ferme, if you don't know what Park Ferme is, there's a cutoff time when you're allowed to make changes to your car before you become competitive. This is a very controversial thing in itself, especially in sprint weekends, because how your car acts in the race is very different to it acts in qualifying. Fuel load, tires, suspension, um, more push laps, weight of the car, everything kind of really changes. Uh, so it would be very advantageous to be able to adjust this between uh, qualifying and the race. And that's why they highlighted this specifically. But on a sprint weekend, you have qualifying, sprint race, qualifying race so there's lots and back and forth and lots of learning that would go on between a sprint race and the actual race and if you had the ability to sneakily change this the av the advantages of this would be absolutely crazy so that's a tea tray um they're all as you can see very different again these are older cars but this would have uh, a, a plate go on it basically around here that would be attached on so that you can't get into here. Now, they said it was done by a mechanic. So this isn't like F-duct. If you remember what F-duct is, there was a hole inside of the cockpit and they held their hand up against it and it would guide air in a different direction on the straights versus the corners and change the aerodynamic flow of the car. So it's not like, or even like DAS, where they're doing something, the driver is doing something. The driver isn't doing anything, at least I, the way that they worded it, he's not. This is actually done by a mechanic without breaking this sort of 
without being able to be seen. So this this height is a, is measured, adjusted before and after the race. But if you can do it without opening the car up and obviously look like you're changing something, for instance, if there's a bodywork bolt uh, that is at the top of this dampener and you're able to tighten that down further than necessary and it would pull up on this tea tray uh, in order to allow you to have lower ride height. Uh, that would be a sneaky way to do it. Uh, that's how I would do it. I would have wherever this carbon fiber is attached onto at the top because at the top of this is actually a hole where you can adjust a bunch of stuff in the front of the car. So I would have those bolts, whatever this is attached to at the top, just for the bodywork, uh, be adjusted down so you could pull up. And keep in mind, we're talking about millimeters here. If you adjust this ride height by millimeters up or down, you can change the, the dynamic of the car completely. So Planet F1 makes a pretty good uh, highlight on how this will help. Okay, so they're always, they, they highlight here, they're always searching for their optimal ride height. So ride height is very important, especially in these types of cars because this is a ground effects era you want to keep that curtain of air around the car to be as sealed as possible that's what creates all your downforce and having that as sealed as possible all the time is really what makes a super efficient car so what does that mean so basically during the race and during qualifying, the biggest thing that you're gonna notice with the car is fuel load. And they mentioned this right here. Fuel load play, plays a major part of the car's weight and constantly it's a ride height. So keep in mind that these cars are very susceptible to this. If you remember the porpoise thing that happened before, that's what happens when you break that seal. Either you're too high or too low. So what happens is the car comes down and it eventually contacts the actual um, contacts the actual driving surface and it stalls out that aerodynamics and what happens is that breaks imagine if you're in a stream and you hold your hand like this and the water's flowing over top and as soon as you hit a rock down below that flow completely changes and then you lift your hand back up or if you're driving down the road and you go like this with your hand, with your hand outside the window, and you'll notice that your hand goes up and down. And what that is, is, is the aerodynamics are stalling as soon as you change the angle of your fingers and you're, it, it's able to lift you up. And that's what the porpoising is doing. It's stalling out that aerodynamics and making the car jump up and down. Adjusting your ride height and keeping it where you need it to be all the time, i.e. when it's light versus when it's heavy, can completely change the way that the car acts. And they go down this list here, and of course the potential benefits can currently, uh, uh, wait, uh, therefore a slight adjustment. This can alter the car's balance, shifting it towards the front and potentially reducing energy. Moreover, the lower splitter increases local downforce at that point. And they have their, okay, so like, basically there's another way to look at this as well, is that if you know that you're able to adjust this, you can design the car around that. So it's not only specific to be able to adjust it, but you can adjust it and make the car an adjustable T-Tray car. So if you were know you were able to do this and you've been doing it for a while, you could model your car around that and the advantages of the actual movement of the tea tray might be minor, but building your car around that would be a major adjustment. We're not talking about a couple tenths, we're talking about half a second kind of stuff, especially when you consider that this would be over an entire race rather than something like a DAS system, which really kind of only helps you warm up the tires or uh, an F-duct um, kind of trick or the hole covered kind of trick, which really only kind of helps you on straights and really only on long straights. Whereas this is integral to the whole car. Not only that, but it would make it so that you could kind of get around issues like plank wear. Um, what else do we have here? Let's go over what the FIA, this is SI.com. This is the only way, uh, place I could find where they were, uh, the FIA actually said something. Uh, so the FIA hasn't released anything on their website that I've seen or any sort of technical delegation that would say what they're changing. As of yet, this is all pretty new, uh, but I found on this site what they had actually said to the press. So the narrative aesthetic of the front wing may be adjusted using existing parts so this is 40-2 no parts be added removed or replaced 40-9 a competitor may only modify a part any part of the car may not modify any part of the car so we already kind of know that that and then the fia spokesperson said any adjustment of the front bib clearance during park firming conditions is strictly prohibited by the regulations while we have not received any indication that any team employs such system the fia remains uh vigilant that our ongoing efforts would enhance the policing of the sport as part of this we have implemented 
than in new procedural adjustments to ensure that the front bib clearance cannot be modified. What does all this mean? So um, it sounds like they're going to put some sort of seal on that whole way that that is adjusted, whether it's score marks on a damper or um, maybe sealing off the whole area with tape. Uh, we've seen stuff like that before. If there's certain things you can't open during a race or they might just do extra checks based on uh, during um, their actual uh, the, the race. So like there are things. So if you imagine, you know, when they pull up at the front of the of the pits and they do weight checks on the car, they might then do actual ground checks from the top of the suspension down to or the top of the damper down to where the bottom of the car is possibly there's a bunch of different ways they can do this surprised that this isn't a thing already the amount of checks they do on the car is quite high who do we think is doing this uh i like this picture because this is kind of like the top three of four teams could it be somebody lying outside of the top four teams i don't know if the risk reward here would be pretty low the only team that i can think of that would really might be doing this aside from the top four would be Austin Martin, uh, only because in recent times they have lost a lot of oomph in their car. But if you're thinking of long-term kind of cheating or subjugating the rules, uh, they have been going slower, not faster. So would you expect that to really happen? Hard to say. So Austin Martin is the only one out of the top four that I think it shouldn't be. Let's make a case for everybody else. McLaren has gotten increasingly fast over the past only about about 12 to 14 months uh, they've gotten super super quick in this year it seems as though they've really unlocked something in that car they also seemingly have had a few little things going on with them and in the past kind of wrong Ron Dennis kind of uh, years they were heavily <laughs> Heavily, obviously, and find cheating big time. Um, not only from cooking the books and from sharing data and stuff like that. Uh, so that's a case for McLaren. I would only say it's them because they've gotten unusually fast out of the top four in recent months. Uh, so you maybe they've been able to unlock that cheating if they were doing it. Red Bull, history of kind of pushing the limits of the regulations, blown diffusers, uh, blown rear wing, lots of kind of stuff like that that have gone on in the past. They've also been struggling. Would this be a latch ditch kind of effort to try to gain some of that aerodynamic loss that they have been struggling with over their package? They also have struggled very heavily with ride height. They've also uh, experimented with ride height very heavily in the past. If you remember the 2021 car, 2020 car was very, very uh, raked out, i.e. the back wheels were, um, the back of the car was very high off the ground and the front of the car was not. And that was part of their aerodynamic package for those years was to have a very raked out car. It would be very advantageous if you could rake out a car and change your front, uh, your front ride height as well. So that's a case for Red Bull. Just just kind of the trying to hold on to it, trying anything. They've also been messing with their floor a lot. We saw them have Franken floors for three or four races. Um, and then there's Mercedes, also a very high candidate. They have done this kind of stuff in the past. Um, DAS system is probably the most recent that I can think of. Some tricky way to change something in the car that they necessarily cheating that one, but a very along those lines where interpreting the rules in a way that not everybody would agree is proper. I don't want to say in the spirit of the sport because that makes everybody very angry. Uh, but Mercedes have done that kind of stuff in the past. The only reason I would say it's Mercedes is we remember the bulge and the hump on the top of the car uh, and the, the bulge on the sides of the car and the bull and the hump on the top of the Mercedes car. The hump on the top was when it seemed like Mercedes unlocked a lot of their potential this year, and it looks like it's something to do with adjusting suspension height, um, as well as the suspension geometry that they have in the front. If you remember near the first of the year, people noticed that there was a plate on the side where the, I think I wanna say it's the control arm comes in, but it might be the stabilizer, uh, where they could have several positions where that would be. Um, it seems like the front end of the Mercedes has been the biggest struggle for many years now. Uh, they've also worked very heavily on their front wing. We saw them unlock a ton of potential when they're messing with their front wing. It seems like a lot of the Mercedes issue is near the front of the car. The front dampener, i.e. the T-tray, would be a integral part of that. 
they've also one of the teams is that is still at times dealing with um dealing with uh porpoising issues and ride height issues as well they've had a very hot bottom for most of their drivers which would mean that they are scraping the car a lot more they've also had uh somebody disqualified this year for having uh weight issues that is sort of linked mostly to wearing of a plank uh there are tons of things against mercedes if i were to bet on anybody that's the team that i would say it probably is just because the 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 case that you can build against them is quite high that being said we also have Ferrari, who seem the most inconsistent with ride height this year. Um, if you think about how to adjust ride height on the car, especially the front, a lot of the issues they have are track related. The tracks that that ride height doesn't work very well are tracks where they're not doing good at. So if you think of how good they were at Monza, that is a track where ride height really, really does does matter just because of the speeds that are going there all the time so on high speed courses they seem to be pretty strong um, aside from that ferrari have a long and lustrous history of pushing the rules uh as far as they can go they're more and i'm only saying this as kind of conjecture but they're more of an engine kind of fiddly company um they've always done weird engine things and that seems to be their mo again that was many years ago who knows what they're doing now they have changed a lot at marinello so it's hard to say in my mind it doesn't feel like a ferrari thing tricky suspension stuff not necessarily their mo whereas fuel gate and some of the other stuff that they've done in in past years has always been a kind of an engine kind of thing so those are the teams i mean it could be one of the lower down teams but i highly doubt that they would risk so much for so little so if you really think about it there's kind of only and there has been since mclaren really unlocked the car and mercedes caught up a little bit we want to say maybe miami or i don't know silverstone around there where it's been top eight spots locked out minus perez sometimes because he likes to be an idiot but you're really only fighting for three points eighth nine or maybe yeah ninth and tenth basically so Two points for ninth, one point for tenth. Are you going to risk being disqualified for the entire season for two or three points to get you maybe seventh or eighth in the Constructors' Championship? I doubt it. I wouldn't personally. I mean, but it's it's not the only thing I could see is Austin Martin because they're really trying to claw back some of the performance that they've lost over the past 12 months or potentially Racing Bulls or RB or whatever you want to call them now. Stake F1. Whatever. <laughs> no, not steak. What are they called? Visa Cash App? I don't know. Whatever you want to call them. I can only see them maybe kind of cheating uh, because they're a sister team. Uh, so cheat with the team that doesn't have any, uh, any stake in the game and then use that technology on your main team if it works out kind of thing. I don't know. Hard to say. Those are the, those are the things that I could say out loud that would make it seem like it would be one team or the other. Personally, I would say it's Mercedes. It seems like a Mercedes kind of thing to do, but our case can be made for pretty much all of them, to be honest, but we'll see. I assume that this way the FAA is gonna do this, that it would no longer be happening. So look for a team over the next few races that seems to have lost all their pace. If McLaren somehow is eight tenths behind everybody else when they previously weren't, or Mercedes falls back into Austin Martin or Ferrari, it could be multiple teams as well. So you could see one team continuing to be fast and everybody else dropped down. There's no, nothing's being said that it's necessarily one car. It could be all of them. You could see, it could be all four of them. And the, the lower down teams are the ones complaining about it, like Haas and Alpine and stuff like that. So you could see the entire bottom of the field catch up, or you could see maybe it's Haas and Haas is now back down with Sauber where they used to be 12 months ago. It could be anybody really. Uh, there's, there's, a small case to be made for pretty much everybody out there to try to unlock potential, but we'll see what happens this weekend. Thanks for joining me. Subscribe if you're new, throw me a like if you got a second, and I'll see you guys next time.